Welcome to Two Left Fielders. I'm your host, Harry Gassell, in rainy Gainesville, Florida. Joining me as always, my co-host, G. Mart. Let's go with it. Garrett Martin tuning in here from Louisville, Kentucky. You're expecting another snowstorm tonight, so wish I was down there in Florida with you, my man. Always wish you were down in Florida with me. What's good, man? How's your last week been? It was going great, but, you know, I was watching The Uninterrupted on FS1 or whatever it was, and... I like how, like, you, you had to think about it. You're like, wait, what channel is Skip Bayless on? Yeah, I couldn't remember, but Shannon Sharp, the way he refers to Skip, I saw a compilation. I think I'm going to start referring to you like Shannon. We know Skip. Skip, I know Skip. Yeah. Like that, Skip. Talk, Skip. Anything else you want to know about me, Skip? Mm-hmm. I'm going to start calling you Harry. <laughs> what do you think? Fair? I'm into it. I'm into it. I, can I still call you G-Mart? Is that fine? You can call me whatever you want, but I'm going to call you Harry. 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 <laughs> All right. Enough of that. So how was your trip home? You went back home to South Florida to Miami, right? Did you get your, your pit bull fix? I know you were really upset last time when they were mixing the king of pop with Pitbull or whatever the case was, did I you get your fix? How dare they disrespect Pitbull, right? Throwing in Michael Jackson into his beloved Miami music. Ugh. <laughs> Ridiculous. So you had a good trip home or what? I did. I brought my horse to Mokai. They kicked me out. What is Mokai? Is that a nightclub? No, I'm just kidding. They brought they brought someone brought a horse into Mokai and they closed the nightclub. And then they brought it to the mayor of Miami, and he was like, are you serious? This is an actual quote. This morning, we heard about and saw an extremely troubling video of what I can only be described as insane stupidity. Like, they brought, like this man's got stuff to deal with, you know? Like, Miami's got, like, crime and stuff, and they're just like, hey, someone brought a horse into a nightclub. And he's like, Dan Gelber out here, like, cool. <laughs> Ridiculous. Only in South Florida. It's like uh, in the show Atlanta, they highlighted all you need to see in the headline is Florida man. I don't know what this Florida man keeps doing, but it sounds like Florida man has struck again. This time he brought his horse to the nightclub. So there's that. I think what originally happened was last year during spring break, they pulled a similar stunt and they brought in a camel and no one said anything. So they were like, we're going to up this. And then they brought in a horse and then the horse, because I don't know if y'all know about horses, they poop all over the place. So there's just a horse pooping up in a nightclub and no one's saying anything. Of course it got shut down. (laughs) Unbelievable. Not surprising. I really shouldn't say unbelievable. Nothing should surprise me coming out of South Florida. Like me. All right. I have, I just want to say really briefly, we're going to get to March Madness. We're going to get to some sports stuff. I was trying to make a point last week that I think might've gotten lost. The point that I was trying to make was that the Louisville coach got fired for a scandal. Correct? Right. Uh, we, we all know about that. And this is, he got fired in a scandal in one of the shadiest industries in the whole world. And those aren't my words. Like, college basketball right now is being investigated by the FBI. And I asked if one of these coaches, I use Tom Izzo, who's the coach of Michigan State, as an example, if he was being sued by a porn star, would he have to step down? And the answer, of course, is yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And I just think it's insane that we're holding the sketchiest people in the whole world to a higher standard than the president of the United States of America. And I know that this is a sports show and we're out of left field. So I'll throw in a sports analogy for you. All right. Here's a sports metaphor I have. It would be like, let's talk about a baseball team. All right. Let's give them a random name. Let's say their name is like the Marlins. Right. (laughs) Then let's say someone came in and they're like, you don't need a GM. You don't need a manager. You need an outsider, someone that's different from all. Let's call him Derek Jeter. Right. Now Derek Jeter comes in and now the Marlins are way worse than they were before. He starts trading away things for not getting back equal value. And everyone is, is just really not on board with what. Let's call him Derek Jeter. What Derek Jeter is doing. And now everyone is just kind of like, ah, eh, he's Jeter. He'll figure it out. And he's not Jeter, and he's not figuring it out. And on top of all that, he's being sued by a porn star. <laughs> you know what, Harry? I think you're making some valid points that, Where quite frankly, we? I think Congress should hear your argument after I that. I feel like I'm in the upside down. Seriously. I mean, when you put it like that, it is rather baffling what we got going on in this country. To, I mean, I guess you could say... Uh, Trump is the Derek Jeter of the United States or Derek Jeter or Trump is the Derek. I mean, I don't, I'm confused, bro. That was unbelievable. You just threw me through a loop, but you made a great point. I know. 
I just want I want a boring white person running the country. I want a boring white person running my Marlins. Is that too much to ask for? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> fair enough, Harry. Great points. You know, moving on now from that ab- absurd point, I like what you had to say. I think it's safe to say March Madness lived up to its name this past weekend. You know what I mean? I mean, Dickie V said it best. March Madness is wacky, man. I mean, seriously. <laughs> we had we had every top four seed in the, the South region fall. Most notably, the first ever 16 seed beat a one seed. They beat number one overall Virginia. seed, Virginia. What happened? I mean, not only that, they beat them by 20. It was a blowout, 76-56. Wild. Unbelievable. I don't even know what UMBC is. I don't know what UMBC was until I did a little research. All I know was my girlfriend, she was fired up when she discovered that they're the Chesapeake Bay Retrievers. They're literally, you know, they've got a, a, a house dog as their mascot, to say the least. I mean, I did see that, you know, they were getting, they got great press as they should. It was a historic upset. Uh, I think definitely my Louisville Cardinals could take note. We lost to Virginia three times. <laughs> UMBC busted them by 20, so there's that. Uh, I did see also that uh, Steph Curry, he sent in his unreleased uh, Under Armour shoes to them. What do you think of that, Harry? I think he had just hella left over. I think that oh, he knew no. he weren't going to sell. He's like, how many kids? 16 easy. He's like, you sure you don't want 1,600? I have 1,600 <laughs> of this Under Armour shoe. Oh, no. no. One would buy because they're not Nikes. Fair argument. I mean, I know – uh, from the looks of things, these new uh, unreleased shoes definitely look like a little hey, – they might be messing with a little trademark infringement of the uh, most recent Kevin Durant shoe that Nike released, but that's beside the point. I think you're right. I think he only gave them to them because he had so many left over. On, in other, what, are in, the, what are the pre-sales for the shoe? And then Under Armour went to Steph Curry, and he was like, pre-sales? We don't – what? What is yeah. that? What? Come on. Now, I think through all this March Madness talk, I think you're – Forgetting to, I mean, I guess you're trying to avoid the fact that you're my Florida Gators yeah, lost. Your Gators, they to, lost to Texas Tech. So to, to whatever Texas Tech is, Texas they, Texas technically beat Florida. Is that what, is that what that stands that's exactly, for? That's what the text stands for. It's technically they beat Florida. Unbelievable. Well, um, I think it's safe to say March Madness is, you know, as usual, living up to the bill. But it's been pretty really wild this year. For anymore, man. I wish that UMBC just took it all the way because they beat Virginia. But no, it was just a fluke because everything in March is just a fluke. Nothing matters. The, the 16 team beats a one seed for the first time in history. It doesn't matter. They lose immediately in the next round. Your prediction of Arizona didn't pan out too well either. They went down in round one against Buffalo. My prediction was Michigan State, thank you very oh, much, bad. which also doesn't look very good. <laughs> Fair enough. At one point, we were both speculating that Arizona would make a deep run to later have it vacated, but Michigan State also knocked out early to 11-seed Syracuse. I think uh, my, my exact quote was Duke probably. I think if we go back to the second episode, I think my I said Duke probably. Duke probably. And I settled now, on Duke. That's what it's looking like because unless unless Syracuse beats Duke, I I think Duke's going to take it all. I mean, they're the clear favorite at this point. I hate to say it, but I think Kentucky's got a favorable draw. I mean, the top four seeds in their region are out. They play Kansas State in the next round. Uh, but you know, hopefully that. Shout out to Kansas State. Also, shout out to whatever the Chicago team that BUM is. I saw, you know, ESPN, they're known for giving us absurd statistics. They said they referred to the Kentucky versus Kansas State game as a rematch of the 1951 national title game. And I think it's a bit absurd to refer to it as a rematch. Neither of the coaches was even born. So thanks for that, (laughs) Thanks for that, ESPN. A big rematch between the, the 51 title game. Good. That's wild. Enough of that. I'm tired of talking about... UK, they're my they're my biggest rival. I'm moving on. I know. In See, our... No, like I disagree with that. Like I think, let, look. So your your boys are Louisville, right? Like you yes. you you live in you live and die with Louisville. Mm-hmm. Louisville didn't make the tournament. I think you got to pivot to start rooting for Kentucky because that's what I did. You know, like I was rooting for UM. UM got out. I'm rooting for for uh, the Gators. The Gators got out. I guess now I have to root for FSU, but I don't want to. But I probably will. I'm just pivoting. Come on, Harry. There's no way. Come on, y'all. What up? There's no way I'm going to be pulling for the University of Kentucky Wildcats. That's the last team I would ever cheer for. Why? Bam out of Bayou. He makes more money than I do. I, you know, I've just been harassed and mocked my entire life by the BBN. I'll cheer for literally every other team in college basketball before UK. It's just how it is. 
But that's what it, it is. What it is, Harry. I've had enough talking about them. We've already given them too much airtime. <laughs> On to another subject. In our first episode, we highlighted Colin Kaepernick's stance on racial injustice, or rather his kneel on racial injustice, taking a knee during the anthem. And I was absolutely flabbergasted to read a headline. O.J. Simpson, the juice man, said, juice. he said Colin Kaepernick made a mistake and he should stop attacking the flag. What? Yeah, Colin Kaepernick should start attacking people. Good one, O.J. Yeah, come on, O.J. I got one thing to say about that, O.J. That's all. I got one thing to say. Back this Jerry Jones and your Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> you, knew, you knew we were going to fit it in. You knew we were going to fit it in. Oh, it's so wild. I feel like OJ is just like thinking about Cavs 30 for 30 at this point. He's like, trust me, just start attacking people. It's going to win a bunch of awards. You're going to go on a media tour. You're going to make Harlan's career. It's going to be awesome. I suppose he probably should have said he was hypothetically protesting, you know, in a hypothetical situation because you know, we all know OJ was, uh, you know, vindicated. The glove didn't fit, so he was a quit, but whatever. Enough, t- enough air time for, for the juice man as well. Is that how just how we switch topics now? We just we just say enough airtime. Enough airtime. I mean, I'm really at this point. I'm just getting a little. Uh, fly, I mean, I feel a little bad about some of the things we've been carrying on. UK being one. Now we're giving the love oh, yeah, to OJ okay, yeah, the yeah, juice yeah. We'll man. Talk about something else. The Oakland Raiders this week dropped Michael Crabtree and picked up Jordy Nelson. But if you look at I, Jordy Nelson was on my fantasy team last year. He didn't have a touchdown after week five. When Aaron Rodgers was out, Jordy Nelson was no good. He had one game where he had seven yards on one catch. And how do you you're, – you're the best player at your, at your position for the team. How do you not get two fantasy points in a PPR? What's wrong with you, Nelson? I think but, it's – I mean, it's clear, Harry. He got that second chain snatched by Aqib to leave this year. The Raiders said that's enough. Chains. This is this is Oakland. You ain't going to get – one chain snatch is enough. It's, a, you know, one of their final seasons in Oakland. They couldn't stand to have the disrespect any longer. Jordan Nelson ain't going to get his chain snatch. I'll guarantee you that right now. I'll snatch Jordy Nelson's chain. I'm sure you will. In other I mean, news with the... The, uh, Jets, the Jets have made moves. Yes. This week. Big moves. They what? They they traded up three spots, was it, from the 6 to 3, and they gave away four picks. I think, uh, obviously, the sixth pick, they gave away two second rounders and a, a second rounder for next year, right? They did. And it seems weird because it, it looks like the move they're going for is they're going to try to draft a quarterback, right? Isn't that the, That's what I would try to do. But they, they picked up Teddy Bridgewater. They picked up their quarterback from last year. I, I, are they trying to get Barkley if Barkley is still – Barkley's probably going to get drafted one overall, This uh, the Penn State running back. I don't know what this move is because realistically, like if they're on the board at three, they're probably going to be on the board at six. And this quarterback class is really deep. So I thought they were going to pick – I thought they were going to do anything else with this. This was a bad move. You know what? I don't think they need a quarterback. They got my boy Harry. I said Harry. I was going to say Harry. They got my boy Harry, Harry Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Harry Bridgewater. Starting quarterback for the Jets. <laughs> they, uh, they signed my boy Teddy Bridgewater, Louisville alum. They got me feeling emotional like T.O. It's my quarterback. <laughs> I was choked up when I saw Teddy got another chance. Not Harry Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater. But I was choked up because I thought for a second that I was the starting quarterback of the Jets, which would still be their best starter probably in the past 10 years. Absolutely. I'd definitely take you above Mark Sanchez. I think you could avoid a butt fumble of your own. <laughs> I was about to say Mark Sanchez. I love it. Ridiculous. Uh, there was a Denver game this week. The Cavaliers played Denver. They scored 126 points, and someone on the internet tried to eat one chicken McNugget for every point the Denver Nuggets scored. Oh, the no. Denver Nuggets scored 126 points. He did not eat 126 Nuggets. He ate 82 Nuggets. Tapped out at 82. I can eat 82 easy. Give me a break, Harry. You got 82 I in the bag? Eat, I can eat 82 Chicken McNuggets easy. I'm not saying I could eat 40 more than that, but I can eat 82. I mean, this guy in Denver, he got to 82. I mean, he's in Denver, so he probably took advantage of his rights. He probably ate a few edibles. He started knocking down nuggets. He said, you know what, I'm going to try and go for it. He probably passed out of sleep at the 82 nugget mark. And, you know, in our we have a group chat we've started with our executive producers. we got Jose and our buddy Luke. I've never met Luke Shout in person. Shout out to Luke Leonard and Jose Abdon Santos Leon Jr. I've never met Luke, and he's claiming 
he can eat 120 nuggets. So Jose said, check out Luke's Instagram. From the looks of things, Luke is about 5'5", 120 pounds. And it looks like he might have issues getting through a second bowl of Cheerios in the morning. So <laughs> if, if Luke gets through 120 nuggets, I think we're going to need to get him up to Nathan's hot dog contest this summer to take on Joey Chestnut. When I was when I was in New York visiting Luke, we went to some dumpling place, and Luke didn't even finish his dumplings. So there's no way he could eat 120 nuggets. <laughs> Man can't eat a plate of dumplings. Ridiculous. Can't even eat a plate of Luke dumplings. Freak, can't by be- the way, Luke is freaking out right now that he made the podcast. I'm sure he is. I mean, he's been helping us. As you guys see, we've still got YouTube videos up. We're not. We're two left fielders. We're not tech guys. So we had Luke look into getting a. Our- I only work in tech. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's trying to get us on to, uh, you know, get our podcast page up and rolling. So on another note, we'll have that coming uh, allegedly soon. Also, in a game since that game, the Cavaliers played the Nuggets again, and the Nuggets scored 108 points while we're on the Nuggets. The Heat beat them last night. I don't have a chicken nugget update for you, but the Heat did win in double overtime, and it was very exciting. I saw Bam Adebayo had a nice dunk as well. So Heat are rolling. They're the seventh seed right now. They're in the are Kentucky spot. is Kentucky still paying Bam Adebayo? I think they might be. I, all <laughs> I, I know is Kentucky's not anymore. paying Bam Adebayo, but Josh Jackson is still waiting for that first check to come in. Oh, <laughs> Josh Jackson with a new pair of rims. I love it. What an era! I saw that Tyrone Blue. Uh, he's taking a leave of absence. To address some health problems, but don't worry, everybody. LeBron James is still the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Got him. Uh, no, there's no word on whether Tyrone Lee stepping away was a soup related injury or not. I don't know if Jr. tossed a saucer of soup at him, but uh, we wish <laughs> we wish the best of luck for Tyrone Lee. Uh, you know, as he addresses these health problems, trying to get back to the uh, Cavaliers before the playoffs start. All right, and then uh, finally on the show, we're going to do the the Trump news of the week. I'm not going to say the Jimmy Kimmel thing, but I just said it, so it doesn't matter. Trump wants a space force. (laughs) He wants us. He wants. uh, Here, here's the exact quote. I am very excited. Here's um, um, uh, here you go. John Raymond is an Air Air Force Space Command. I'm so excited to have support of Donald Trump as we work toward the goal to look forward to making it a reality in the near future. Like, do you really want Guardians of the Galaxy? Is this a thing? Is is Chris Pratt available? Can we have Chris Pratt be the Guardian of the Galaxy in real life? I think Trump could get 120 nuggets down. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got 120 for breakfast with six Diet Cokes as well. He's a clown. A Space Force? What is this? Star Wars? You couldn't wait to make that joke. I couldn't couldn't wait. wait. I mean... I was like, I I had a Chris Pratt joke ready. I was going to talk about Chris Pine. Doesn't matter. Nuggets. Nuggets. I mean, we're talking about who can take down 120. Donald can do it for sure. He's probably been eating a lot of nuggets with the lawsuit he's been dealing with lately, but... You know, nothing surprises me out of the Donald these days. He's a clown, an embarrassment. So we might as well make light of it with humor, I guess, right? I want a space force. I want a space force. We're gonna have the best space force in the whole world. All all of space is gonna be ours. We're gonna rule space. We're gonna rule America. Make America great again. Make space great again. SpaceX. Elon Musk and I. And that's my very limited Trump impression. I'm so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> it was pretty good, to be honest. <laughs> We could volunteer him to be an Elon Musk thing to send him to Mars for life. That wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, and then we're going to end with a Yelp quote. We ended with a Yelp quote last week, and some of you seem to like it, so I'm going to do it. Here in Gainesville, Florida, the Swamp Restaurant, a staple right across the street from school, right next to Midtown, here is this week's review. Made an account just for this. Always a good opening. I've never got so sick so fast after eating something. My girlfriend and I ordered wings, which for some reason couldn't be split in half and tossed in two different sauces. I, I kind of feel that, but okay. But that's no big deal, right? We waited for our wings and drinks for a good while. Still no big deal, though. My girlfriend ordered the buffalo chicken tender wrap, and it came out cold and in a tortilla that can only be described as hard and stale. The chicken was icy, and she received blue cheese after asking for ranch. That's not a big deal. Okay. I ordered the freshman 15 burger, solid burger. 
It came with a raw egg on it. It wasn't supposed to be raw, but it could have been on the heat for only a minute. That's a typo. After one bite, my hands weren't covered in yolk, and that would have been fine, and I would have been excited, except, wow, this is terrible. I should have read this first. I had the clear goop from the raw egg coating my fingers. Oh, I no. Stum- <laughs> I stomached half of it, and now I truly know what regret feels like. My girlfriend is rolling in bed with a stomach ache as I write this from the bathroom. I've never felt so bad about spending $40 in my life. And that's how you know this is Gainesville, not Miami, because... You'll, you'll spend forty dollars and feel worse. I promise you. I promise you. I, they'll make you ride a horse around a nightclub. Worst forty dollars I ever spent. Oh my god! This Yelp quote of the week is already getting out of hand. The second week, I mean, I'm feeling a little uneasy. I feel bad for these people, to be honest. I feel bad for his grammar teacher. This is awful. This is riddled with spelling errors. Must have went to FSU, right? Oh damn, that was good. <laughs> Still beat both of us in the tournament. That's this week's show. If you're into it, make sure to subscribe. Go on our Twitter page, at Two Left Fielders. My name, of course, is Harry Cassell, and my buddy, G-Mart. I hope you guys enjoy the last bit of March Madness. March Madness is wacky, man. I... Until next time, y'all take care. Yo.